Good morning, everyone. It is New Comic Book Day, and we are right on the verge of August. I'm still recovering from San Diego Comic-Con. Got everything caught up, but I am way behind on my books. But that's going to change because I want to get to some of my trades that are sitting there, too. Uh, the Fables Unwritten crossover has started. I really got to get caught up. I haven't read any unwritten. I've heard great things about it. I got to get to that before the new Fables trades come out. Plus, I'm trying to get through American Vampire. First two trades were excellent. If you guys haven't checked it out, there's a one shot up there that you can read. It hooked me. It You don't have to read anything else. It's, it just jumps you into the world, shows you some characters, and from there, I was sold. So, American Vampire, uh, unwritten. Like I said, heard good things. I haven't read it. I'll let you know as soon as I do. Uh, before we begin, August 10th. Creative Women Mini Con, we have been pumping pretty hard. If you guys are gonna come, heck, if you're not gonna come, share the event, share it on your Facebook, your Twitter, let people know it's gonna be big, it's gonna be fun. We've got a dozen women coming down here, art, comic books that they're creating, we're getting a lot of coverage. We've been working with um, you know, local uh, papers, stations, and we're gonna hopefully make this nice and big and we can use your help on it. So thank you very much and we got a contest. This is a Where the Millers, not so much a contest. Well, I guess it is. Where the Millers next Tuesday, admit to Tuesday, August 6th at 7.30 p.m. It's the day before it comes out. If you want free tickets to Where the Millers, it's got that really annoying guy from Saturday Night Live on it. And for the contest on Facebook only, post a video under this video with uh, something that he's in. The one with the most likes by the by tomorrow gets the tickets. Now, you gotta pick the tickets up by Saturday or I will give them out to make sure they go to a new home, or a good home, a new home and a good home. So, on to actual comic books. Archie, we got some life with Archie. That's a really neat cover. Archie continues to be strong. It's crazy. I have never read an Archie book in my life. I know that sounds strange, but I, I never did. There was always something else on the shelf that, that attracted me more. So I've never read it, but it's continu or continually popular. And the, despite the fact, well, not despite, this is actually building up its popularity. You've got the afterlife with Archie where zombies come to Riverdale. They've said it's not a kid's book. Do not put it next to the other Archies. Kind of conflicted on that. Archie's kind of got its audience and to put something on the cover or make me put it on the top shelf or away from the kids stuff just is asking for trouble uh, but people are popular or people are excited about it it's popular so what are you gonna do all right I, the first two Marvel books I wanted to go with because it's not only amazing story but it's incredible artwork it, it's like 50 50 I can't choose between the two so Guardians if you guys have been reading it or if you haven't, uh, Earth has essentially uh, been, all the other alien races have been banned from going there. This place is a problem. There is just a ridiculous amount of superpowered beings who get into constant trouble. So it has been cut off from the rest of the galaxy. Of course, the masterminds behind all this, the leaders of their different races, aren't all obeying that rule because Earth is also a gold mine uh, for powers, technology, all kinds of things like that. Tony Stark is up in space taking a hiatus from Earth and he's working with the Guardians who are on the run from the Spartex Empire, heck, from everybody. You've got Gamora, you've got Rocket Raccoon, you've got Groot, you've got um, uh, Star-Lord, Drax, of course, and they're on the run. This one here we get introduced, reintroduced to an old face that, uh, well, we all love. So, uh, it's a she. Oh, plus Angela's in it. Uh, remember that, End of Age of Ultron? You will like her. Uh, she's here. I love that belt, that ridiculous belt that holds absolutely nothing up and has like 10 feet of extra loop. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, still a good book. This is issue five. Number six is going to be, I believe, plotted by uh, Neil, but I don't believe it's gonna be written by him, it'll be Bendis. So, I know a couple people were disappointed about that. Oh, and I said it was 50-50, I didn't even mention Pacelli. The guy is great. His art, the even the moments where nothing's going on are just absolutely beautiful. So. Take a peek at it, really, really good book. X-Men, Koipel and Wood. I mean, what more need be said? If you guys aren't reading Ultimate X-Men, Wood is knocking it out with that one. This one's good, Ultimate X-Men's honestly better. But you've got two early organisms that developed on Earth, essentially brother and sister. They battled, the brother won, sent his sister off into space. This is long before humankind. She's back to take revenge. He has control over organics, she has control over technology. She took over the X-Men base, 
They managed to run her off after she re or took control of uh, Karima, who is an X-Men uh, that is pretty much or, or technological. So she's on the run. The brother and Storm and her team go after him while Kitty takes the time to disarm the bombs that were left at the mansion. Things go horribly wrong there, and this is the conclusion to this story arc. All right, Batman, everyone, if you want this, if it's not on your saver, let me know. They're going to go fast. This is the end of the Grant Morrison run. I believe he even says it on the cover, it's the epic conclusion to Grant Morrison's run. The run that I don't even think takes place in the DC New 52. It is so odd. It is so out there. It's got Talia. It's got an army of Batman. The city has been destroyed uh, due to Talia's revenge against Batman. You know, not really any good reason that I can see. She didn't care about her son. Uh, she's just pissed at Batman for not loving her uh, the way she wants him to. Uh, you know, it goes up and down. Batman's got a cow in the cave now. He's got a cat. Uh, it really just depended on what drugs Grant was doing that day. So this is the conclusion. If you want it, email me, Facebook me, call me, let me know. I'll put it away for you because they are going to go pretty quick. Tom Strong, one of the ones I'm really excited about. A pulpy adventure. If you guys haven't read it, there's five volumes over there by Alan Moore with Chris Sprouse on artwork. And it's just a great, fun time. Uh, he's an old school adventure. It's him and his family, his Amazon wife, uh, his uppity daughter, his robot, and his talking gorilla. I mean, you don't really need much more than that to sell that book. Let's see what else is out this week. New Testament continues, the Clyde Barker book. Absolution, you guys got the free comic book day one. We're on to number two. We've got Indestructible Hulk. We've got Batman. Zero year tie-in with the annual. In fact, there's a few annuals out this week. You've got Superman, you've got Flash, you've got Batman. I know I missed one. You got Animal Man. So it is an or annual month, evidently. Let's see. Red Lanterns continue. The Green Lantern stuff continues to be good. Wake. Yeah, I said that like I was really excited. I've only read the first issue. That's how far I am behind. But it's at the top of my pile. Like the first issue. Uh, didn't blow me away as far as Snyder's writing went, but. It was building up, but Murphy's artwork was worth the trip. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we will see you on the 10th. It's kind of a light week, but there's some toys. You've got some uh, Play Arts, Batman, Poison Ivy, Harlequin, uh, Justice League 2 packs. So we'll see you in the shop. We'll see you August 10th, and have a great week. Don't forget about the contest.